spirit. Glory to God. If you can hear me, say amen. I want to make sure everybody can hear my voice. Thank you, Jesus. All right. God bless you all. I'd like you to welcome my daughter to our live service today. Makaya is joining us for the first time and she's excited about it. Makaya, good to see you. You want to say hello to the global family? Hello, everybody. I don't know if you can hear me. Absolutely, we can hear you. Thank you so much. I'm really pleased to be a part of you guys. We welcome you. We receive you with the love of God and we know you are being blessed. Hallelujah to Jesus. Thank you very much for joining and we thank Adao all the way from India. We welcome you one more time. God bless you, ma'am. In the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, this is your hour. Bless us. Minister to us in Jesus' name. So we are talking about get together with the Holy Ghost. Isn't that beautiful? And in this get-together tonight, just imagine yourself sitting round about the table and the Lord is at the other side. Please imagine what I'm saying. And the Lord Jesus, through the Holy Ghost, is speaking to you on this table right now, like a conference or a boardroom, in preparation for the 30 days fasting and faithing. Don't mistake it for fasting and prayers. We're not going to be doing fasting and prayer. We're going to be doing something that you've never done. And you're going to get the result you've never gotten. Fasting and faithing. It didn't say without prayer, it is impossible to please God. He said, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. And so we're going to be dealing with faith matters in the 30 days fasting and faithing. And these are the preparations that the Lord asks for us for this period of fasting and faithing. Glory to God. All right. Um, Father, we thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, take over in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm be, I'll be speaking to you on the subject titled, Stop Blaming the Devil for Your Spiritual Irresponsibilities. <laughs> Stop blaming the devil for your spiritual irresponsibility, even on things he knows nothing about. Many Christians have been raised to be glorifying the devil through wrong discipleship. Many Christians have wrong mentality and of the devil. You have a very wrong image of the devil that makes you to glorify him. I'm sure many of you have been in church services when they ask you to praise God the way you are so silent like a desica. You can even be chewing bubble, bubble gums. But the moment they say let us pray against the, the devil, the voice of everyone will go to the highest level and then you wonder what has happened here. All the people that were dosing before will be alive because of the devil. <laughs> These things ought not to be. Don't forget we are at a round table talk with the Holy Ghost. And he's speaking to us from the heart of the Father, from the heart of Jesus Christ. So it's going to be a fun time in the presence of the Lord, making mockery of the devil and bringing him under your feet. God has raised me up. He commissioned, anointed, sent me to subdue the devil and enforce his will on earth by raising for him a holy nation of kings and priests disciple them to know discover their destiny and empower them to fulfill the same god has raised me to raise men in five areas of life in gospel ministry those who are in the front line of fulfilling god's purpose in business innovation and entrepreneurship excellence in professional and career excellence god has raised me to raise men in public and political excellence. God's children must take leadership in political world, in business world, in career world. God's children must take leadership. And God has raised me to raise every woman to become custodian of destinies of their children and their husband to fulfill their own destiny. These are the five areas God has called every man to fulfill for him. And you are operating in one of those five areas. And the devil must be brought under your feet. You must understand what God called you for. And you must be empowered to fulfill that destiny. This is the reason why the Lord brought you to Jesus Global Ecclesia. 
Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. Hallelujah to Jesus. So now, in this kingdom where Jesus Christ has established by his sacrifice that he gave his life to be able to gain back the world, I've said this many times, we're going to refer back to this again in this teaching. We realize that the reason why we are suffering is not because there is a devil that has two horns looking so beastly like a terrorist ready to swallow you. It is because of ignorance and spiritual irresponsibility. The devil is so magnified in many people's mind. The power you give to the devil is in the wrong mentality about him. Today, I'm recreating the image of the devil in your mind. And I know that after today, you will see the devil under your feet in the mighty name of Jesus. The wrong image of the devil in your mind that makes you think he is not what he is will be cast down today by the reason of the truth of the word of God in the name of Jesus. And you know, the devil enjoys his dishonor that many Christians give to him continually because he knows you are ignorant. And for some of you that has been taught certain truth, he knows that many Christians, sadly so, are very irresponsible. Irresponsibility with the truth, irresponsibility with the power of God, irresponsibility with the knowledge of God. And I pray that you will go out there and begin to demonstrate knowledge and spiritual responsibility in the mighty name of Jesus. This character called the devil is ignorantly blamed for many things, if not everything, in the life of many Christians, even things that has nothing to do with him. And this consciousness attitude displaces God. Do you know people are more conscious of the devil than they are conscious of God? And this is an aberration. This is a disaster. But he says, set your affections on things above. How is it that the devil is the one you are having affection for? The affinity that many Christians have for the devil is unbelievable. There is no God in all their thoughts. They are constantly thinking of the devil. <laughs> <laughs> From today, this is changing in the name of Jesus. Proverbs 19 verse 2 say, Also, that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. And he that is dead with his feet, sin it. It is not good for a soul to be without knowledge. What distinguishes and enhances the capacity of the soul, what strengthens the soul or weakens the soul is knowledge. The kind of information that is being conceived by imagination into the subconscious mind is what defines what the soul becomes. Hallelujah to Jesus. I want to do a quick IQ test for you. We call it, maybe you call it quantitative analysis. When you were trying to learn your times table, do you know that every answer you have ever given in an examination is in your subconscious mind? When you were studying to pass examination, what you were doing was that you were trying to say the formulas, the understanding in your subconscious mind. You were imagining and saving them file by file. It doesn't matter the number of subjects you were doing, you were saving them into their different files into your subconscious mind. Let's go back to matric, secondary school. You were studying physics, you were studying biology, agriculture, mathematics, English, or whatever you were studying. And you were able to draw from your innermost being, from your brain, you will say, but it's actually deep in your subconscious mind. Answers to every question. Those who fail any exams fail because they couldn't store the answers in their subconscious mind. And the one we call brilliant, we, you say they have photogenic brain, they are genius, is because the capacity of their brain subconscious mind is such a way that it has been trained to save information. Some of you need to read the same thing three times. He just needed to hear the lecturer or the teacher says it, then he grabs it. Every brain is a genius brain. Depending on how you train it, depending on what that brain is wired up to do, every brain 
It's a genius brain. Because every brain is the same. The same number of neural cells, the same number of tissues, whether you are black, Indian, whether you are Yoruba or you are a Zulu, the same brain. But what do you feed into that brain determines what the body will respond to. What is saved in the subconsciousness of what is locked in between your brain that is called the soul of a man is what determines what a man will become, a failure or a success. What defines a poor man is the image in his subconscious mind. He sees himself poor and he, he remains poor. The day he changes the information in his brain, in his mind, in his subconscious mind, like Jabez changed that and the story of Jabez changed, that poor man will become the richest. All you need to do is to find the relevant information, store it in the right place of your brain cell, deep in the invisible subconscious mind, you will transform this man. The Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do you hear that? For a soul to be without knowledge, it is not good. Romans chapter 10 verse 2. <laughs> and now be careful the kind of knowledge that you put into that brain. When you put the knowledge of evil there, you will become evil. But when you put the knowledge of good into your subconscious mind, the way I have taught you by faith, when you receive the word of God, by any means the word of God comes to you, and you prove it that this is the word of God, and you image it, you are able to conceive it like Abraham did, like all the elders did, and they obtained good report. When you, when you image this word of God, the word of God said, no shall be buried in your midst. And you are qualified for these promises in Christ Jesus. Because all the promises of God are in Christ, yea, and in him, amen. So when you settle this fundamental truth, you know therefore that there is no promise of God that will not be fulfilled in your life. And so all you need to do is to take those promises, image them, see them come to pass in your life. When he said the righteous shall flourish, see yourself flourishing like the palm tree. When he said whatsoever I do it shall prosper, see yourself prospering, whatever you do. When he said the seed of the righteous shall be mighty upon the earth, see your children becoming great. It doesn't matter what you look at physically. Why we look not at things that are seen, but the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen, they are eternal. They are not seen, but you can see them with the eye of your mind. Your imagination is what you use to exist in the spiritual realm. Your mind is the bridge between the spiritual realm and the physical realm. Whatever you can see with your eye of understanding, your imagination is already a reality. I have not seen here, I have not hear that it has never crossed the heart of man. So whatever can be seen with the eye, whatever can be heard with the ears, and whatever can come into your mind is already a reality. It's existing. There is nothing you need that has not been provided for. All you need to do is to turn your hope to faith as you have been taught. So as soon as you image the word of God, as soon as you see it happening, and you connect the joy of it happening in your mind. You rejoice. You receive it with gladness. You connect the emotion of seeing it in reality. It's already yours. Then declare it in the realm of the physical. Walk towards it. As Apostle James said, faith without works is dead. Hallelujah to Jesus. So Romans chapter 10 verse 2. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. You see, many children of God, so to say, are ignorant. They are babes. They are slaves of carnality. They are ignorant. They are not well taught. And this ignorance is what makes the devil seems like he's got power over them when the devil is actually afraid of you. Say with me, Satan is afraid of me. Even if you don't believe, say it. After you have said this several times, you will start believing it. Say, the devil is afraid of me. A man of God, I don't want to say that to because the devil can come to me at night. You see, you already have that wrong mentality. 
you believe the devil will come to you at night, or you don't believe the angel of God encamped round about them that fear him and they are saved. What you have in your imagination is what you will see in manifestation. If you don't change your mind, your mind will change you. If you don't change your mind to the positivity of the word of God, the negativity in your mind will change your life to negativity. As a man think it, as a man continue to see with his mind, so it becomes, so it becomes, so it becomes. Get together with the Holy Ghost is what we are dealing with. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Say with me, the devil is afraid of me and I will prove it to you very soon. Hosea uh, chapter number 4 verse 6. The devil is afraid of me. Thank you, God bless you. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. You see, Romans 10 2 says, I can confess that I know you, 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 you seem to love God, but you lack knowledge. You've got zeal. No knowledge. You can pray from money tonight all the wrong prayers. No knowledge. You are forgiving God many times because of ignorance. No knowledge. And he said, I will give you pastor. According to my heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Jesus Christ said, when the Bible says in Ephesians, that when he led captivity captive, he gave gift to men, some pastors, prophets, evangelists, teachers, apostles, for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the work of the ministry for the equipping of the same the ministry there is talking about your purpose every one of us have purpose and every one of us are powerful in christ there is no devil that is not afraid of you if you are a child of god only that you don't know who you are thank you jesus say again the devil is afraid of me say it with confidence the devil is afraid of me is afraid of me. Say it again. Say the devil is afraid of me. In Jesus' name. If Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, my people, God's own people, his family member, his friends, his children are destroyed. And he's not going to do anything about it. He has done everything he needs to do about it. He has given you pastor, but who are your pastors? What does your pastor know? What do they teach you? Karabo Saketabayaba. Blind men, leading blind people, all of them are going to fall into the pit. The greatest pain of Jesus Christ, the greatest pain of God, the ignorance of his children. My people are destroyed because thou they lack knowledge. They lack knowledge. God Almighty says in his own word that the singular factor of your destruction is ignorance. Romans chapter 1 verse 28 and even as they did not like to retain God in their consciousness and in their subconsciousness what did God do? He gave up on them. He gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient all that God did to the children of Israel Numbers chapter 11. They don't want to retain God also in their own knowledge what happened to them? They were destroyed in the wilderness. They believed the devil more than God. They believed the Amalekites, the Jebusites, the Amalekites are going to kill them. God said, no problems. Since that is what is in your mind, I can't help you. Whatever is in your subconscious mind will become a reality for you. It's only a matter of time. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. Who is the man that we walk in the dominion that God Almighty has given us in Christ Jesus. My spirit is itching to get into some depth, but I'm laying foundation for this. Who is that child of God that we destroy and enforce the will of God on earth, that will enforce the destruction of the works of the devil? Who is that child of God that will ride in dominion day and night over sickness over poverty over lack over failure who is that child of god that will put the devil to flight consistently who is that child of god that will make satan to weep who is that child of god that will frustrate the devil frustrating the tokens of the liars and making sure the diviners are mad who is that child of god the one that makes himself available to be equipped. 
who is studying to show himself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That child of God is the child of God that makes himself available to be taught. Like you are making yourself available now. And to learn and apply the truth. Learning to apply. That is the victor. The devil is as powerful as your ignorance and spiritual irresponsibility. I like to say that again. The devil is only as powerful as your ignorance and spiritual irresponsibility. You remain as poor as your ignorance of the spirit of poverty. You will remain rich as your revelation of prosperity. Everything anybody does is a function of the revelation they have in their subconscious mind. The moment you start seeing your mother as a witch, you will behave and relate to her as one. <laughs> we are all products of what is saved in our subconscious mind. All that we went to learn in school is to put certain things into our subconscious mind that formulates what you call your career, your professionalism, your skill. They are all stored in the subconscious mind. And from the subconscious mind, we're able to solve all day-to-day -day problems, activities. You know, sometimes when there is some handy works to be done in the home, maybe like the plumbing works, that there is a water tap, you know, hallelujah to Jesus. They just to do some small, small things at home. It's just, it's just me as an engineer, you know what I'm talking about. There are electrical efforts, I get down to do it. You understand what I'm talking about? Because it's, I, I, it, subconsciously, I spring into action immediately because I am trained as an engineer to respond by default into such things. Do you understand what I'm talking about? This is the same way you are supposed to be trained and be skillful in the Word of God so that no matter the situation, you respond by default. Ah, do you understand what I'm talking about? If you do say amen, you must swallow the word of God to the point that no matter the situation, you respond by default. If you have not gotten to the point where you are responding by default with the word of God, you have a long way to go against sickness, against poverty, against failure, against anguish, against things that are not in accordance to the word of God. How do you respond? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, where is your face? What? You're empty. If you fail in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Every situation of life make you cry. Every circumstances of life make you to be looking for the pastor. You are so empty. I am not raising such children. I'm raising children that at some point, they take the battle to the gates of the enemy. The devil knocks at your door, you know what to do. Get the sledgehammer of the spirit and kick him. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. A little feeling of headache. Ah, I think that my thing is just about to start. Which thing? Which thing? God did not say you may not feel the headache. He says when it comes, say I am healthy. I rebuke it. I lay my hand on the sick. I recover. Even as you are saying it, the headache is increasing. Look away from the headache. Look into the word of God. Transform that headache to what you are seeing in your mind. Immediately travel in your mind to Jerusalem and see Jesus being beaten with one stripe and call it headache and say, headache, that stripe was against you. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are overcomers. And we overcame in past tense. And they overcame past tense. We are just living the script of an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Let me not jump. So the devil is as powerful as your ignorance, in case you don't know what you are supposed to know, and as powerful as your spiritual irresponsibilities, in case you have been taught but you are not applying what you are supposed to learn, what you are supposed to do. I was telling somebody, I think yesterday, that the Bible says, is any afflicted among you? What is the recommendation? Let him pray. While prayer for affliction. <laughs> Because affliction comes 
because of ignorance. And when the affliction arises, the Bible says affliction shall not arise the second time, right? <laughs> because now you have taken care of the affliction by knowledge. And the recommendation of affliction is prayer. Why? Why prayer? James chapter 5, verse 14. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elder. He didn't say let him pray. If you are sick, call for the elders. They will anoint him in. Let them anoint and, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. James chapter 5, verse 14, right? Or in James chapter 5, verse 13, is any among you afflicted? Number one, why should anyone be afflicted? But in case anyone among you is afflicted, what's the problem? Let him pray. And I've taught you what you use prayer to do. Prayer is used to ascend, to find the answer of the reason for that affliction and bring the answer to destroy that affliction. To begin to afflict all your afflictions <laughs> before they afflict you. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. So is any among you afflicted? Let him ascend and come back with the answer to kill that affliction. Period. Is any man sick? Why should you be sick? But in, in case you have abused your body, in case you have eaten what you are not supposed to do to eat, you have use your body in the way you are not supposed to use it there is this solution there is balm in Gilead get to the elders and they will pray over you not they will not pray for you they will pray over you to pray over you means the prayer of faith they declare with authority and I pray over everyone sick here today be healed in Jesus name thank you Lord it's done hallelujah glory to God if you believe say amen you know, the story of a true man of God is like the story of Elisha and Naaman who came to the man of God and the man of God said, okay, just go, go wash in the, in the dirty pool. And he said, I thought he would come out and shake. I thought he would come out and, and sneeze and call the name of Jesus seven times and so my sword on the ground 15 times. Yes, he did not even come out to me. He even sent his servant, my master said, go and wash. And a wise servant of his said, man of, sir, just do what he says. I have just declared over you complete healing. You will wake up, suddenly you will not see those sickness again. Those diseases, those infirmity, you will not see them again. I don't need to sweat. I know the authority I have in the name of Jesus. It is not my job to heal you. It is my job to declare you ill with the authority of the name of Jesus. The angels knows what to do if they don't want to be sacked. Any angel assigned to ensure you are healed are on your, on, on your case right now because they don't want to be sacked. So relax, you are healed. You are healed in Jesus' name. You are cured of all diseases. You are delivered from all satanic oppressions. Simple. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Do you understand? Okay, let's move. First John chapter 5, verse 18. We are dealing with get together with Jesus. Stop blaming the devil for your spiritual irresponsibilities. We know, first John 5, 18. We know that whatsoever is born of God, sin it not. Mr. and Mrs. or Miss and Mr. I'm just human. That's how to be a sinner and that's how to go to hell. Don't ever say I'm just human. If you are born again, what distinguishes you that you are now a child of God is that you don't sin again. Simple. First John 3 verse 8 says, He that committed sin is of the devil, for this devil sinned from the beginning. And for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. And here is the children of God manifested and the children of the devil. So the difference between a child of God and child of the devil is sin, period. But he that is begotten of God keep himself and the wicked one touches him not. Can you see that? The devil is afraid of you and the scripture cannot be broken. James 4, 7 says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. The devil will flee from you, not you flee from him. The devil is going to flee from you and not you fleeing from him. And the scripture cannot be broken. Matthew 28 verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. If Jesus has all power, which one is the devil using? The one you gave him in your mind? Romans 8, 17. And if the children then hears, ears of God and joint ears with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified with him. And the scripture cannot be broken. Do you know what it means to be an inheritor of God? You have inherited God. So if you have inherited God, haven't you inherited all the power of God? Didn't God say silver and gold is mine? Why, do you, why are you broke? If you are broke, if the promises of God are not happening in your life, check how you are living your life. Check what you have in your mind. 
Some of you think you needed to fast and pray 21 days before God will answer you. Wrong mentality. He is a father. There are things you don't even need to use faith for. When it comes to God, don't think about what you are going to eat. Don't think about what you are going to wear. Clothes. Don't think of what you are going to drink. Don't think. Don't even use faith for those things. They are not your responsibility. They are your father's responsibility. The problem is that you're a big boy of God. But he said anyone that will get the blessing from him must be a child. I'm a child of God. You are a boy of God. Some of you are teenagers of God. Some of you are senior boys of God. So you don't need his help. I do. <laughs> oh, the senior boys of God say amen. And the big girls of God, you see. All the big girls of God say amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Are you hearing the word of God? Are you a big boy of God? Or are you a senior boy of God? <laughs> or you are a child of God? Which one are you? Child of God. Oh, only today. You are, you are now converted to become a child today. He said, unless ye be converted and become like a little child. The inheritance is not for you. All the big boys can take care of themselves. They have gained independence, isn't it? You remember how rebellious you became when you became a teenager? All the big boys of God remain suffering, okay? That's why you can't inherit any blessing. But those of us who are children, we get the blessing every day. Ooh. Say hallelujah, big girl of God. Hallelujah. You see, the big girl of God has just said hallelujah. They know themselves. <laughs> hmm? All the babies of God, all the children of God, say amen. Amen. <laughs> Some of you need to repent. You need to repent today. You stop being big boys, stop being big girls to God. Be a child. Child, child. We do everything for our children, don't we? Sir, yes, sir. But the big girls and the big boys, they are on their own. That's why you are on your own. Satan can slap you anytime. But if you are a child of God, the kingdom belongs to you. Child. The kingdom belongs to you. Karaba, so fat, oh, oh, of course, oh, oh, that's how it works. That's how it works. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy he that has the power of the dead, that is the devil. Child of God, Jesus destroyed the devil. There's a question I always ask If Satan is still that power, throw away your Bible. God lied to you. Jesus is fake. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? If the devil is still powerful, poverty is still powerful, sin powerful, lack powerful, then Jesus died for nothing. I don't want to bombard you with too much. I just want us to analyze. The, the Lord is the one speaking to us in a round table today, right? Are you with me, child of God? That's why I like reminding you that you are a child of God. So listen. Stop praying. Stop, just stop praying for one day. Stop praying for two days. Stop praying for three days and start thinking. If this problem in my life is still there, what did Jesus die for? If Jesus died for your sin and you know you are safe and poverty is still in your life, if your salvation is genuine, you should know therefore something is wrong with you. Why poverty is still there? If sickness is ravaging you, you must know therefore that Jesus did not lie. You are the one lying to yourself. You must sit down. Stop praying. Stop praying. You prayed enough, just stop praying for now and start thinking. For the first time in your life, do biblical, oligolistic reasoning. Think. This thinking is what the devil doesn't want you to do. And the reason why your life is the way it is, sit down and think. If you can think, you will get the light and you will realize your situation does not require prayer. Why you are thinking? You will hear the voice of God. Understanding will come to you. Why is this situation like this? If Jesus already destroyed the devil, he destroyed the works of the devil, but you can't see the result in your life, something must be wrong. Not with Jesus, but with you. Do you understand? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. Who, whatever version you are using now, Colossians 1 13. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness? Wait. And has translated us to the kingdom of his dear son. What did Jesus do to you? He delivered you from the power of darkness. Why is the power of darkness overpowering you? Let's talk. It's a round table talk. I'm not preaching today. We are having Holy Ghost discussion. <laughs> Colossians 1.13. Write it down. Mark it. Read it to yourself as many times as you can. Until you see what he said. 
who has delivered us from the power of darkness. If you were delivered from the power of darkness, which one is afflicting you? Answer that question. Is poverty power of darkness? Talk to me. On mute now and respond. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is barrenness power of darkness? Yes. yes sir. Every every affliction you are going through are they power of darkness? Yes. How come you got yourself back into that bondage? Did he not say to you, stand firm in the liberty wherein Christ has made you free and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage? It means you took yourself back to the power of darkness. Who understood what I'm talking about? If there is anything in your life that Jesus died for and you are still reaping the reward of death as if you are a sinner, you took yourself back into it. And how did you take yourself back into it? Through your imagination. Whatever you believe in your mind will happen to you. You give the devil power to enslave you when you believe his lies. If you see barrenness, go back to the word of God. Be transformed into fruitfulness. There is no barrenness in God. There is no poverty in the new covenant. There is no failure in the new covenant. These ones that are in your life, change your mind. They will not change until you believe the truth. Those things are lies and you took yourself into them out of ignorance, foolishness, irresponsibilities. Stand firm in the liberty wherein Christ has made you free. As in Christ translated you from the power of darkness, how did you get yourself entangled in the yoke of bondage again, child of God? Am I reading Bible? I'm reading Quran. <laughs> Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty, freedom. We are in Christ, has already made you free from sin, sicknesses, diseases, failure, poverty, anguish, broken marriage, the devil, husbandlessness, childlessness, every evil. Jesus has paid the price fully. Where did you collect the one you are having? Where did you get the one that you are having? Where? Galatians 5.1 The instruction is Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. It means you can be entangled again, right? Not because Jesus did not pay for it, but because you took yourself into the entanglement. And how do you take yourself into the entanglement? Through ignorance. Through irresponsibility. Through your mind. Through your mind. What do you have in your mind? What do you have in your subconscious mind? You believe it must be hard. If it is not hard, then you have not tried. <sighs> I don't pray for money. What did I say, child of God? Pray for money. I don't pray for money. Me, pray for money. To do what? To fear what? Me, I pray for money. He supply is my father. I'm a child. Do your children pray for money? <laughs> Me pray for clothing. I don't pray for such things. I don't even think about them. They come. They come. I live my size per time as God lifts me. Watch the space. I will dedicate my airplane one day and it will go, go to become fleets and I will never pray for one of them. There come a time you will start bringing jets and say, Daddy, I give you this jet. There will be many mansions. I don't need to pray for them. They are not my job. My job is to seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All other things shall be added. When you discover your purpose, sickness will leave you alone. Diseases will leave you because you must do the work of God. You can't do the work of God with sickness. When you are on course of destiny, God is committed to you. Simple. Simple. Very simple. When your passion is to do his will, to obey him, there is no devil. There is no devil that can stand your way. Ah, what are you saying, man of God? James chapter 3, verse 7. That's what I'm saying. James 3, verse 7 is what I am saying to you. James 3, 7. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. When you submit yourself to God, you resist. The, how do you resist the devil? By boxing. No. Every opposition of the devil requires specific light. You resist the devil in your mind. You fill your mind with the truth as against the lies of the devil. When the devil knows that you know the truth, he will leave you alone because you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Can I mess the devil up for you? The devil is simply your examiner. External examiner for that matter. It's not even your lecture. It's an external examiner to come and test what you have been learning. Do you understand? 
Hallelujah. Colossians 2 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was written against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Jesus destroyed it. Look at verse 15. And having spoiled principality, NIV said, it disarmed them. It dis Personally, that you dare read amplified version for me of Colossians chapter 2, verse number 15. It's my if I around. If I read the Living Bible, if you have it, let's read Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. Let's, let me mess up the devil in the Holy Ghost. Let me, let me put the devil under your feet. Colossians 2, verse 15, amplified. After that, if I, you read the Living Bible for us, and Emmanuel, if you are there, you read NIV for me. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15, amplified, personally. Yes, Colossians chapter 2, verse 15, amen. Yes, please. It says, when, when he ambulance and authorities, those natural forces of evil operating against us, made a perfect example of them, exhibiting them as kept in his triumphal procession, having triumphed over the cross. Amen. Thank you. The Bible says Jesus Christ publicly disgraced the devil. And you read it throughout the pages of the four gospel. Those disgrace were the way he was casting them out and humiliating them, healing all the sicknesses and diseases. The Bible says for Jesus to have done that is the proof that he lost, the devil lost all power. And now through his cross, he finished the job. The living Bible, if are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yes, ma'am. And having disarmed the powers and authorities. Wait, ma'am. You know what it says? Amplify said he did what he disarmed them. What does it mean to disarm? Everything that makes Satan's powerful, he has been stripped of them. So which one is the devil using against your children now? Which one is the devil using against your health? Which power is the devil using against your academics? Which power? So you need to take authority. Every opposition you see is an opportunity to glorify God. It's to prove that you know the truth. So when you begin to see anything that is contrary to the promises of God, what do you do? You take the promise of God, process it in your mind, receive it into your subconscious mind, stand up, get it back, and begin to declare it. Let the devil know. Listen, when the external examiner comes, what do you do? Don't you defend your thesis? Talk to me. Don't you defend your thesis? Yes. That sickness is your thesis to defend. That, that lack is a thesis for you to defend. And how do you defend it? You stand and begin to prove that you know. And then you will be rated. Do you understand what I'm talking about? No matter the question the examiner asks, you give it back to him based on your level of understanding. And you are graded. That is how to fix the devil. Read on, ma'am. It is disarmed. Yes. And, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle Ooh. triumphing at the he My made goodness. a public spectacle of them. Do you know the meaning of that? He put them to shame. He disgraced them and they could not do anything. Emmanuel, are you there, sir? Thank you, sir. He disarmed. Every version tells you that he disarmed them. Jesus has stripped the devil of all power. As a child of God, there is no devil. Do you think God is stupid? As your father? To allow the devil to be messing up your life? No! You are the wall that he left us is an examination ground to help us to grow to the full knowledge of him. And the devil is the external examiner. The devil is your advantage. Use the devil to your advantage. The devil is afraid of you. Many of you think the devil has autonomy. No, the devil is an employee of God. He has been employed after the victory of Jesus Christ as an external examiner of your faith. That's all. He has been employed as an employee of Jesus Christ as an external examiner of his children. All that you are going through that seems uh, they are simply an examination for you to prove that you know the truth. And so if you fail, you go back and write the test until you pass. Stop running away from challenges of life. Face them and kill them. You have victory already. You have victory already. The scripture cannot be broken. Jesus finished the devil. John 16 verse 11 says, Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged already. The scripture cannot be broken. If Satan still has power over you in Christ, in Christ, what did Jesus die for? Your ignorance is your devil. What did I say everybody? Your ignorance is your devil. Say with me, my ignorance is my devil. <laughs> There is no devil that is devilish enough to change what Jesus has already done. If there is a devil that is still parading himself around you, failing you, making you poor, making you sick, it is because you are yet to understand what you are supposed to understand in Christ. 
The moment you know the truth, the truth shall make you free from poverty, from lack, from failure, from barrenness, from curses, from rejection, from disfavor. The truth! If you have been delivered from the power of darkness, which one is afflicting you? There is only one explanation to this. You see that you are breaking the constitution of our kingdom. You are not working according to the word of God. You entangle yourself again with the yoke of bondage. That little lie is the problem you have. That little unrighteousness, that secret boyfriend is the problem you have. That's why, you see, it's so funny. People go to do, th you, you give your life to the devil and you expect God to bless you. It doesn't work like that. Those things are for children. Let the children first be filled. If you get anything from God out of sin and unrighteousness, it's because of crumbs. It's a rain is rain on the just and on your just, but there are some special blessings that is meant only for those who love him. If you love him, you keep his commandment and you get a special blessing. You can imagine. You even have three boyfriends and you are praying to God with which mouth, which God is going to bless you. <laughs> hey, oh God, this sin I'm just about to commit. I'm just a man. Forgive me for this sin. I know he's coming this night and I don't have power to resist him. Lord, I know you will forgive me for this sin in Jesus' name. Carry on, okay? Carry go. Congratulations. The devil is your father. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 21. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. How many things are yours? All things are yours. You have inherited God. You are joint heirs with Christ. All that God has belongs to Christ, and Christ gave himself for you. Jesus inherited one thing. When he finished the work for the Father, God, God exalted his name, gave him a name that is above every other name, and he, he willed that name to us. Do you even know what it means to have the name of Jesus? Do you know what it means to, to be an inheritor and joint heir with Christ? If you know, you will sleep quietly at night and fear no evil. The Bible says you will be quiet from the fear of evil. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world, the whole world or life, evil death belongs to you. You can send death to kill people. It's your birthright. <laughs> or things present or things to come. All is yours. Look, who is God? What does God hold? God owns the whole world. All the demons are at your service. If there is somebody you want to afflict, you can send some demons to them to afflict them. That's why Paul said to the Corinthian church, hand him over to Satan that he may, he may learn not to blaspheme. The devil is your servant. The devil is your servant. Use him to your advantage. When you say Satan, shut up, he will shut up. When you say Satan, sit down, he must sit down. Because the devil is your property. Say with me, Satan is my property. Say it. The devil is my property. Oh, they are afraid. That. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them, oh, they don't want to say. Say the devil is my father's property, and he is my property. He's my property. Ah, only Kaya is, a, is present today. Look at them, they are trying to process it. Ah, it doesn't sound like what they believe. How can, how can the devil be my property? The devil is your property. God created all things. The Bible says Jesus has made, God has made Jesus the head of all things, head of all principalities and powers. The devil is under the feet of Jesus. The devil is at the command of Jesus. Many questions will rise after this. Yes, I'm, and I'm ready to answer them by the Holy Ghost. The devil is your servant. The devil is your property. How can your servant be afflicting you? You give them power. You gave them power. Do you know how you give a maid power in the house and he abuses your children? The day you say to a maid, these children, the day they misbehave, beat them. Ah! When they put different marks on your children, whose fault? <laughs> the devil is your property. The devil is your servant. <laughs> Process it. Receive it. Understand it. Whatever you tell him to do, he will obey. In the name of Jesus, you will cast out devils. Jesus took over the governance of the world and handed it over to us. Satan doesn't control this world. It is we that controls this world. That teaching is on the catalog. Go and find it. We are the controller of this world now, not the devil. Don't come back and say to me, the devil is the prince of this world. He's not the prince of my world. The kingdom of this world has become the kingdoms of our God. We control this world. Money is a spirit. When I, when I need money to answer, I give him commandment, he runs. 
and the way you give money commandment is different not just with your mouth are you hearing what i'm talking about there are principles you put in place that will make money to answer to you Ooh, money is a spirit and is your servant favor is a spirit i showed you the other day goodness and mercy they are angels they are not english language and they are your servant <laughs> Everything that is against you are orchestrated by demons. Is that correct? For you to have the opposite of it, you need an angel to do it. There's an angel in charge of that situation that you need to bring into your circumstances. And when the angel takes over, the demon goes. Karabo, that's why I said, in my name, you will cast out devil. What is it about that name? It is the name that is above every other name. At the name of Jesus, every name shall bow. How can you say to a demon to go and they are not leaving? Then something is wrong with you. Then you will, we need to find out where, whether you are in the family of the sons of Skepha. That says, in the name of Jesus Christ, that Paul preached. Get out! And the demon said, who are you? Paul, I know. If it is Paul that told me to leave this place, I know he has authority. There is no unrighteousness in him. Who are you? You just told a lie at work and you are coming to pray at night. Father, father, which father? Your father, you left him in the place of work. Is your father the devil. You cannot mock God. It means you can't deceive God. You can deceive yourself. All our righteousness is a sin. Stop blaming the devil for everything. Find out what is wrong with you. Find out the truth you are not applying. All this year, you've been attending Bible study for the last 15 years of your life. When was the last time you paid your tithe? You were taught how to accelerate answers to your prayer through sacrifice, through worship. Do you do it? And you are there, I don't know what is wrong with me. Continue. Continue, Nick. Just continue like that. You are taught how to ascend. Have you ascended? Do you even practice ascension? You ascend, worship seven times in a day. Do you practice it? Ah, it's not the hearer that is blessed. It is the doer. <laughs> Something must be wrong with you. Stop blaming the devil. The devil has no power other than the one you give him. Through your ignorance, irresponsibility, foolishness, blindness, lack of understanding. Do you understand, child of God? Talk to me. Do you now understand? Who has the problem? The, the, the way you like going to church, ooh, if they give a word for going to church, you will be the first. And the way you dance, who has the final say? Ooh, Jehovah has the final say, even though I don't believe him, even though I can't use my mind. You dance the biggest dance, you have the most damned mind. You can't see anything in the word of God. And you leave, you leave that dancing place to cry. And you even get upset with God. I don't know why God is not doing my own. He has done for everybody, yes. I don't know why. <laughs> do you do what he says? <laughs> do you do what he says? Man of God, you don't understand. I do more than many people. Show us, show me your faith by your works. Show me your faith by your works. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of God. And whatsoever you shall bind on us shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall lose on us shall be loose in heaven. Your binding is not bound. Your losing is not loose because your mind is not working the way it's supposed to work. You've been taught faith. Go back to all the teachings on faith does not pray. Listen, watch, take note, apply. And come and prove to me whether the word of God is working or not. Ignorance of the keys of the kingdom is one of your biggest challenge and how to apply it. Matthew 6 verse 19 says, He will give unto us the keys of the kingdom. And whatsoever we shall bind on us shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall lose on us shall be loose in heaven. Mark 16, 16 to 18 says, In my name they shall come. These signs, these signs shall follow them that believe. You are a believer, but demon are sitting on top of you. You are a believer. You are seeing demon in your bedroom. Demon on top of your children. Demons, eh? Demons! Believer! What makes you a believer? You have, you have opportunity to demonstrate your authority. The one you don't even know. He said, these signs shall follow them that be. Do you believe or not? If you truly believe, cast out those demons like in your life. That disfavor, that lack, that insufficiency, that waywardness of those children, cast them out. You have the power to do so in the name of Jesus. Cast out that sickness. Resist them. They will flee from you. Tell those devils to leave you alone, to leave your family alone, leave your body alone, leave your children alone, and do it steadfastly until they go. That's the power you have as a child of God. Stop playing games. Stop crying. He says, come boldly. Every day you go crying. <laughs> oh God, when are you going to answer me? Ah, Jesus is the answer. He has already answered all the answers. You are supposed to claim it by faith, not by crying. Use your mind to receive your miracle. Receive the word of God into your mind. Conceive it into your imagination. Create how you want your miracle to be. Believe it by conceiving it into your imagination. Open your mouth and declare it. 
begin to talk as though it were dressed as though it were call yourself the way it is connect your emotions see it done in your reality and it's already yours this is how to mess the devil up the devil lost to jesus completely we are now in control shout hallelujah john 14 let me close now john 14 verse 13 and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name that will i do whatsoever what is what is the other word for whatsoever other than whatsoever anything at all that you ask in my name this asking is not prayer whatever you demand in my name i will do it and the one in prayer he said whatsoever you shall ask the father in my name he will do it what else do you want god to do why is he not doing yours because you are not applying the principle the principle is in mark 11 chapter 23 and 24 what this ever ye ask in prayer believe even after you have prayed conceive into your imagination that that which you have asked is given then you shall have whatever you I've prayed for. If prayer doesn't give result, it is believing that delivers result. First John 5 14 says, What things ever we desire. When we pray, we, be, we we know if we ask anything according to his will, we know that he has heard us. And if we know he heard, then we know we have the petition already. Before they go to ask, they already know that it's theirs. Child of God, result of life is about the use of your mind. The victory of your life is in your mind. The failure is in your mind. And whatsoever you shall ask in, in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified. These are the things Jesus does, not the one the Father does. And when you are in faith, Jesus take over. All right, John 14 verse 14 says, If ye ask anything in my name, I will do it. Whatsoever you believe that I have brought to pass, if you begin to decree your healing, your prosperity, your victory, the salvation of the soul, the deliverance of your community, power, I will do it. Because you ask in my name. Satan lost to Jesus, child of God, and we never regain anything he lost. There is no other offering. One offering, he perfected us forever. Jesus does not need to do anything else for you to enter into your inheritance. He's done all, and the devil cannot change what has been done. You are the one to change your mind. Everything afflicting you are in your mind. Every devil is in your mind. When you remove them from your mind, you walk in victory. First John 5, 4, listen to this. For whatsoever is born again, overcomes the world simple and this is the victory that overcomes the world your faith what is faith receiving the word of god imagine it in your mind see it come to pass in your life customize it create your spiritual reality and then save it into your subconscious mind reconnect your joy to see it happen you see it already happen in your mind and you believe it has already happened rejoice in your mind that it has already happened see that the admission is given see that you have graduated see that you have married already see your husband marry him start a family in your mind go to bahamas beach in your mind do it all in your mind come out of that mind declare with your mouth see yourself healed in your mind going to the shopping mall doing everything you are not able to do before walk out of that wheelchair in your mind if you can do it in your mind it's already yours you kill the devil there is no devil that can overpower you when you do what I teach you, because this is Bible. Do you understand? Submit yourself to God, resist the devil, he will flee from you. James 4, 7, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, he will flee from you. The devil will flee, not that you will flee. The devil will flee. The devil will flee from you. Poverty will flee from you. Failure will flee from you. Barrenness will flee from you. They will flee. They will flee means they won't stay near. They will flee because the fire is too much. They will flee because you are not allowing them to use your mind against you. They will flee. Stop glorifying the devil. Start humiliating him in your mind. Start dominating the devil. Stop blaming him for anything. He doesn't even know. You are giving him all the accolade that doesn't belong to him. The, man, the person that is afraid of you. And preachers who are listening to me, stop glorifying the devil. Temptation is normal. Everybody is tempted. And God make a way of escape. When you commonize temptation, no temptation will overpower you. When you the day you commonize temptation, the first thing you should do to every temptation that comes to you ah, is normal. It's normal. Emmanuel, are you listening to me? Yes, sir. When that big, big woman comes and shakes, shakes in front of you, say, it's normal. <laughs> it's normal. This normal thing. This normal thing. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Get yourself out of my way. The devil said, look at the front here, look at the back here, look at the top. It's normal. The moment you say it's normal, you finish the devil. And the bicep guy, the six packs, everything pack, making your body to go on fire. Just say it's normal. When you normalize it, you cancel it. Thank you, Jesus.
It's time for you to begin to unlearn all the lies and begin to install the right scriptural application into your spirit, man. And begin to prove the word of God faithful. As you do this day by day, you will walk in victory. No devil will be able to overpower you. You will walk in dominion. You will walk in what child of God? You will walk in dominion. Jesus has finished the devil. And Jesus has given you all that you need to do. The only factor here is the factor of faith. Use your mind appropriately as you have been taught to receive every blessing that is yours. As long as the devil cannot control your mind, he cannot control your life. The devil is as powerful as the opportunity you gave to him in your mind. He's as powerful as your ignorance, as powerful as your irresponsibility. I rest my case. May the Lord bless you. And I pray from today, let every blindness of your mind be taken away. Let your heart be receptive to the word of life. And this truth will sink. No devil will be able to delete out of your mind. In the mighty name of Jesus. This word will replay continually. And it will shape and guide your life. In Jesus mighty name. And God's children say amen. All the big boys of God. If you are still there or you have become a child of God. Say amen. Yes. Over to you Pastor Mrs. God bless you. See you tomorrow.